Hey guys, today I'm going to do MTG Finance. So over the weekend, or at least on Saturday, I will make sure my videos are always relevant, recent, meaning this video is produced on a Saturday, and top five cards to pick up. So I'm hoping to do box openings Friday and then shift MTG Finance Saturday, perhaps Sunday if there's interest in it, and then go back to what I like doing Monday through Thursday. So these are the top five cards that I would suggest picking up right now. Uh, if you can do so in trade, yes. These are not just going to be good cards to play with today. I think they're going to hold value, if not increase in value. Also, they will, are excellent trade bait, given the price range. So Cavern of Souls never really went down in price. The reprint did not hurt it, given it was a mythic. It was reprinted as a mythic. So the original one never really dropped in price. Uh, the foil copies, with today's foil quality, I would say Avicen Restored was an interesting foil set. I think the set was actually very good for foils. But today, for the master sets, Eternal, all of this, I don't know if I want any foils from recent sets. Even if they look like they're gonna last, you just don't know. I mean, give it a few years and see what happens. So Cavern of Souls is played as a four of in the human deck. It also is very good in elves, uh, tribal. So it's a big card in tribal. It's played in ED8s. It has such wide appeal. So card price is one thing. Yes, you do want to see card price go up, but how liquid the card is in terms of trade, in terms of buy listing in terms of everything for this card is perfect. You want to pick them up soon should they not be reprinted. I don't think they will be. The price will continue. Here is my cheaper card speculation, uh, Coco. Coco is not played. It is not that great right now. But all it takes is one little deck change to make Coco great again. And it's very powerful. So when you talk about, when I like look at cards to put money into, I like unique cards and I like power level. It's To me, it's all about power level and how unique the card. I, I know Filia was good, but she wasn't as expensive now. She's still $10 even though she's been reprinted due to the human deck. So they needed we needed to figure out a deck for them. Well, this deck is already discovered. There is a archetype, a Coco archetype that I feel like is very strong. It just needs a little bit of help. I'm not a pro magic player, so I don't know what mechanically speaking or what type of card would really help it. But Coco at $13 is underpriced. This card is underpriced. It comes from Dragons of Tarkir. It was reprinted in the battle deck, and that battle deck has a lot of value. It's got Windswept Thief and Coco. That reprint aside, Dragons of Tarkir, not much of it was drafted. It was the la the third before they went to the 1 2 1 2 method. I don't think much of it was opened. I can see this card being very difficult to find later on. Unique ability. I, I just can't see like it being reprinted. It's just a strange card to reprint. And I can't see a better version of it. So the biggest danger to a card, in my opinion, is what happens to your Sarah Angels. A Baneslayer Angel comes out and it costs the same exact mana. And it's just better in every single way. Talking about unique cards, we have Noble Hierarch. Noble Hierarch has steadily snuck up in price. It is now a $68, $60, dollars card. I think it's still going to go up. It is played in the human deck. It's essential to the human deck. And it's just a good card. Like you look at it and you say, wow, it's got the exalted. It's comes out on turn one. It provides, you know, green bant colors. Why would you not play this? And also to boot, obviously it's a human. So it fits the deck. So not only is it played in, I think GP Phoenix was humans versus Jund. 
and the human deck won. And the pilot who won GP Phoenix was also won the previous GP. I don't know, but he's playing the number one deck, which is the humans deck. I don't know where this could be rep Maybe the core set, but that seems very powerful. But Land of War Elves is back, and I didn't expect that card to ever be back. Given, you know, they didn't want a one drop producing one. Noble Hierarch is very, very good. Her price point at the $62 to $72, let's call it $70 range, is very attractive. If you can trade into these, yes, you want multiple playsets to trade out of eventually. Very liquid. Uh, all the cards, all my top five cards are extremely liquid. That's what I care about because if some, something goes bad, I want to get out and I need an out. With something like this, you have plenty of ways to get rid of it. Maybe you don't, you won't even want to get rid of it. Regardless, what version do I like? I am not a big fan of the foil cards now unless it's a singleton. Uh, I, I just don't think that they're going... Like the new foils, I mean. The old Conflux foil, I think, is interesting and good speculation. All right, number two is lands, 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 lands. It should be pretty obvious that lands are important to this game. I have Shock Lands as number two, mainly because Fetch Lands are number one. Duh. And Shock Lands have slowly crept up in price. I mean, this is the slowest, like, on most of them. Now... Here's my opinion on um, which ones to get. Get the cheapest ones. Here's the story of RTR uh, came out. They reprinted the, the shock lands. One of the cheapest shock lands was the steam vents. That was about five, six dollars. Temple Garden was one of the more expensive shock lands, if not the most, at twelve fifteen. So you could get two steam vents for one temple garden. And that's all I did. I traded out of my temple gardens. Why was that the case? Because Standard at the time really liked the Selesnia decks. That was the strongest deck at the time. But in Modern, I think a year or two later, the number one deck in Modern was Splinter Twin, which is blue-red. So guess what Shockland went up and guess what Shockland went down? So you never really know. It just depends on archetypes. They are not four elves. That's my big poo-poo on them is I wish, you know, you're not going to play four of each type or each of the relevant types in the deck while you would play four of the fetch lands. However, it does have one advantage, and the advantage is it's been a while. It has been a while. I don't know when the next time we'll see them reprinted is, but RTR was it a long time ago. It was when I first moved to Houston. I've been here for like four or five years, maybe. Uh, I remember RTR, Gate Crash. I went to get both pre-releases. Really good times. All right, number one is the fetch lands. So obviously we can discuss the enemy fetch lands. The enemy fetch lands are played about equally, if not less. The ally fetch lands are actually more useful. And as a kicker, they're just cheaper to begin with um, because they're in a concept hard care set, which is a recent large set, as opposed to enemy fetch lands, which was in a master set where the booster packs at the time, comparing to, you know, going back in time is about two and a half times more expensive retail. So I like them. Very liquid. It has all the indicators of... So if you want to look at what card should I put money into, what card should I trade into, you look at different characteristics. And this is the perfect example of what I look at. Uh, how liquid is it? How much demand is it? Can I trade them in fours? Which is important if I have a lot of them. And is a, a, is a card seeing play in multiple formats currently? And yes. ED8s, casual, like a fetch land just makes everything a tiny bit better. So those are my top five. Obviously, you know, we're going to, if you guys want to like this video, we'll continue it. And, and I won't make a video on the same top five every time. I'll have to do a little bit more research. This time it's super obvious. But sometimes it needs to be stated that go out and if you do not own these right now, you need to go get them somehow without robbing people and stuff, right? 
I would get them today rather than tomorrow. I can only see these cards going up in price. I don't see them being A, reprinted, and I don't see them declining in price anytime soon. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.